Ich Welcome to the heart of rural England. Thatched roofs in sleepy villages, rolling hills, sparrows and robins tweeting on the breeze. But don't be fooled. Out here in the English rural paradise, there could be threats lurking around every turn. Maybe a tractor's dropped some mud on the road. There could be a slippery cattle grid around the next bend. No, out here, you need to know that your vehicle can look after you. Yeah. That will see the job. So allow me to introduce today's vehicle of choice, a Dodge Ram TRX. Now, this starts out life as a pretty silly vehicle. It's a full-size pickup with five heated and ventilated seats, a big bed out the back, and it's powered by a similar 6.2 liter supercharged V8 to what you find in the nose of a Dodge Hellcat meaning this family-sized truck has 702 horsepower and about 650 pounds-feet of torque. This is basically a rival to one of Ford's Raptors. And there's some shade being thrown by Dodge as well, because down here in the glove box, there's actually a bit of a graphic inlaid into the plastic showing a size comparison between an itsy-bitsy little Raptor and a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a T-Rex, T-R-X. Yeah, you see where the joke's coming from, don't you? Now this truck will do 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds, and you would imagine that that would suffice for, well, even an American. But no, what happened to this truck was it left the factory in Michigan and headed way down south to Texas, where it visited the workshop of our friend, Mr. John Hennessy. Now, of course, at Hennessy, if you utter the words enough and power in the same sentence, you get fired on the spot. So they've set about the TRX with a more heavy duty 2.4 litre supercharger, a fuel flow system that could fill an Olympic swimming pool in about five seconds and various other off-road upgrades. But the key thing is the numbers. So we now have, thanks to the Hennessy treatment, 960 foot-pounds of torque, which is more than two BMW M3s, and, wait for it, 1,012 brake horsepower, making this, which they now call the Hennessy Mammoth, quite simply, the most powerful, fastest truck in the world. Ho ho! Now the result of all those numbers is a truck that despite weighing three tons, can apparently do naught to 60 in 3.2 seconds. This should be able to kick dust in the face of a Ferrari Roma, and well, I wanna know what that feels like. So, if we just come to a stop. Now, there's lots of modes in here. There's Baja and mud and snow and towing and rock and sand, but I simply want sport. We leave it in drive. We press our launch button, which has a Christmas tree of drag race start lights on it. That's promising. Maximum brake pressure, hit the gas. Good God, so much supercharger boost. Well, that's 60 miles an hour. That's quite a lot more. My goodness, I think the last time something this big and this heavy this American accelerated this fast, it had Neil Armstrong on board. It's utterly absurd. The whole thing rears up as if it's going to do a wheelie, like a monster truck jumping over scrapped cars. It's phenomenal. But I can't help thinking that just because you can give a truck a thousand horsepower, it doesn't necessarily mean you should. Now, as you might be able to tell from the way I'm being jostled around and having to manage the steering wheel, this is not the most sophisticated car on the planet. It's certainly not the most sophisticated car I've ever driven that has a thousand horsepower. 
normally for that Ferrari would give you some sort of five stage traction control setting but in here I've got some paddles which are bent so they don't get in the way of the volume controls get your priorities right and well quite a jostly ride steering that you can do that with I mean look I've got a thousand horsepower you can move the steering wheel it does nothing That'll be the 37 inch off-road tyres getting in the way of anything by the name of handling there. If ever there was a car that had too much power, it was this. Good Lord, what were they thinking? Problem is, you do have to stop that power eventually and if we give it a hard stop, whoa. Yeah, the thing is the brakes, they feel a bit standard and the power, the power is not standard. I mean, Hennessy, you gave this thing an extra 300 horsepower. It should have a parachute out the back. I find it difficult to believe there's much the wilds of England could throw at the mammoth that it couldn't cope with. After all, it's got 37 inch knobbly tires, up to 14 inches of Bilstein Blackhawk suspension travel, and enough lights to get the attention of astronauts aboard the International Space Station. It makes you feel invincible. Problem is, the Mammoth then ran into a very British problem. And finished. Right, that is a new record for me. 167 pounds to put 95 and a half litres into my truck. Mad thing is, in Texas now, they're about to riot because fuel's gone over the equivalent of like one pound, one pound 10 a litre. Here, one pound 75. Texans, you're getting a bargain. You don't know you're born. Right, now I've got to go and pay. Still, don't worry about the receipts because I've got a full tank, 95 litres. And if I look down on my display, just here, we can see that has given me an indicated range 225 miles. That's what my 167 quid, that's how far it's gonna take us. 225 miles. Never ever again will I complain about range anxiety in an electric car. Naturally, even the most outdoorsy Frontier family is going to need to pop into town for supplies now and again. And I'm afraid this is where the mammoth is perhaps just a smidgen too big for not so great Britain. Now, of course, speaking of errands, got a letter from the Royal Mail, a package I need to go and collect. It'd be good if I could get parked outside the post office, but um, yeah, I don't, don't really see it happening today. Somehow I might have to walk quite a distance. Thank you, Mr. Pickup Truck, giving way out of respect, and so you should. Go and pick on someone your own size. Much, much smaller than me. Yeah, really struggling to get parked. I think if you're gonna have a mammoth as your everyday car, you need to only go to businesses that have drive-through service. Oh dear, up the curb we go. Narrow street, parked cars, blind spots, sensors beeping. This is just horrid. Maybe to you this looks like I've got loads of space. Let me tell you, from in here, it's more terrifying than a lap of the Nürburgring. Oh, this is just horrible. And there's someone in a Fiat 500 laughing at me. Oh, we are knocking down this wall. The stupid American mirrors with their magnified lenses aren't helpful. Oh, well done for breathing in everyone, we made it. So, speaking of drive throughs I think it's time for lunch. If you get hungry, you may well find that your all-American import truck doesn't quite fit into an imported American fast food joint. Of course, when it comes to parking, you're probably going to need to pay for two spaces. Actually, make that four. This is such a ridiculous car. Hennessy says it'll convert no more than 200 Ram TRXs into mammoths. This one is number 15 and each will cost $150,000, or about £120,000, including the donor car. Though if you'd like to spend even more money, you could always go for the six-wheeler version. I know if you're from Texas, then this is just part of the scenery. This is not that outrageous, but take it from me. 
when you're driving it on a British summer's day through sleepy rural England, people just don't know what to make of this thing. They don't know whether to celebrate it or report an invasion. I mean, literally everything about this car is outrageous. The size, the weight, the power, the amount of equipment on board, the fuel consumption. We've been getting six miles to the gallon. So for £120,000, you are getting something that's bigger than a Bentley Bentayga and probably better off-road than a Bentayga and certainly a hell of a lot faster. You're just maybe not quite putting up with quite so much class and sophistication. Britain has a funny special relationship with importing American culture. We don't all drive around in Corvettes and Cadillacs. We don't really have shooting ranges or wear Stetsons. The limey attitude to America is that it's all best served up in small doses. A glass of Coke here, an episode of the Kardashians there, and every now and again, pancakes and bacon. This car is as idiotic and as out of place in sleepy Middle England as the Empire State Building would be in my back garden. So what is the future for big old yank tanks like this? I mean, it's got to be to go cleaner and greener, hasn't it? Even this stuff can't avoid the electric revolution. It's already happening. The Ford F-150 Lightning's here. We've driven that on the Top Gear YouTube channel. There's the very impressive Rivian R1T. And maybe one day we'll get a drive in a Tesla Cybertruck if Elon ever gets around to putting some metal where his mouth is. So where does that leave my big yellow loud friend here. The mammoth, a car named after an animal that went extinct when the world got too hot for it. I guess it's one last yee-haw for the big bad V8 truck and I've loved living a bit of the American dream in the English countryside today. I think I'd like to wake up now though. <laughs>